All right, welcome back to the shop. So my growler, um, ITV262, um, I've had a smoking problem with this thing, um, you know, pretty much ever since I've had it. Um, you can see all the black soot all over the hook in the back, you know, coming out the exhaust, it's all over my hand. She smokes a lot when you take off, and even down the road, it smokes quite a bit. You know, in a previous video, I did a whole video about uh, my transmission controller being bad. So I did a video, you know, on putting this uh, Easy TCU in. And that's probably when all my smoking issues started. Um, or probably started when the transmission computer went bad. That's going to be related. You'll see that in just a few minutes, why that's going to be related. Or just a second here, actually, why that's related to its smoking. So if you've had to change your transmission computer and you have a smoking issue, this video is going to help you a lot. Um, there's also a few other issues where this video should be able to help you a lot. Okay, so basically there is a valve right here that the boost lines for the wastegate valve. Um, so the, the boost line going to the wastegate valve goes to this valve and then the other port on this valve goes to right here, to right out of the turbo. Um, so this is boosted air and it's going to here. There's also two wires going here, um, and they're, I've tested the voltage, and they're, they're control voltage, so it's not just 24 volt, it's not 12 volt, it was somewhere around 5 volt. And I haven't done all the homework, I haven't traced it all back, but I am positive this goes back to the transmission computer, being that there's no other computer. Um, so basically what this valve here does, so this engine wants to run 15 PSI of boost optimal like at its high you know at a high power setting your, your your turbo should be putting out 15 psi into your intake but for whatever reason they want to limit this and so this this valve here basically if there's no controls going to it it's it's gonna let 15 ps or it's gonna let the full psi flow through so if i have 15 psi a boost in my system i'm gonna be sending 15 psi to my wastegate valve which is gonna open the uh, uh that you know a Kind of a flap inside the turbo is going to let uh, exhaust divert out so it doesn't spin the turbo as much decreasing the boost uh, for whatever reason the transmission computer wants to allow it to have uh, more boost it it limits the amount of boost that comes through here kind of as a regulator when this thing is is signaled when power signal to it it limits the, the boost to seven psi seven psi is not enough to open this i don't know why they did it this way i have no idea why they didn't just put um, a wastegate valve here that's just metered at it but for some reason they wanted to be able to uh, drop the boost so maybe when you come off the throttle or maybe when it's in between shifts they want it to come off the boost so that you don't have a bunch of boost build up uh, you know into your intake kind of like when you have a, a car with a mechanic or a, with a manual trance um, like i've got a ford focus st you know whenever you let off the uh, the throttle you hear the wastegate open and psh, you know let's let's boost out and for whatever reason they want to be able to do that so basically that's what that controller is doing so being that i don't have a transmission computer the stock transmission computer anymore this wire is going to nothing it just goes to the end of that cannon plug and that's it where the tranny computer used to be so that is why my engine was smoking um i was just getting full force boost to it all the time i even tried you know just in just trying stuff i i took the line off the wastegate valve hooked it right to the intake uh, just like you know like uh, i'll talk about later like on a caterpillar uh c15 engine you know, a lot of caterpillar engines will do the same thing it's direct um so you're allowed whatever the boost is you know i think it's 15 psi um that's when this will open up and then it, you know as soon as your your boost decreases it closes back up and it keeps it at a steady state of 15 um psi of boost but this is not set that way so we know that the dash pot for this wastegate opens up somewhere between 7 and 15 psi I'm not sure of all the specifics um, it basically doesn't really matter too much um, because so what I did to remedy my problem I bought a boost controller uh, this one is grim speed there were a lot of really crummy Chinese ones online there's actually one that looks like it might work really good that some guy looks like he makes in his garage out of some brass fittings or the check ball in a spring uh, it actually looks like it's gonna be like it would work pretty good this one was about a hundred dollars uh, but the other one wasn't readily available it was about two weeks out but anyways this one is adjustable you can hear it click but where you can have it and it's got a gauge down here so you can see where you have it so what this this valve does is it limits the amount of boost that goes to my wastegate valve so I can set it where I want it for what boost I want to run um, it's not perfect it's not going to be controlled you know for, with the throttle or whatever or the transmission shifting as the other one was but i hooked this up and i got rid of my smoking i get a little bit of smoke on acceleration especially when it's cold um 
but it is uh, way better. I have a lot more power and I can really hear the turbo working now. Um, so anyways, that's what I had to do to, to remedy my problem because of you know, my transmission computer being changed out. Um, if this valve is bad, um, you, can, you can buy this valve. So I would stick with the stock one if, if you can. Uh, but if you're not able to get this valve for some reason and it goes bad, don't hook the line directly from the wastegate valve to the turbo, you know, thinking you're going to make it work better or whatever. It's not going to help you. It's going to make it worse. Um, if for some reason you, you can't get this controller to work, you can't get this controller, it's not working for you, um, this is an option to do something like this, just a, a boost control regulator. Um, one other important thing is to test your boost. I already started filming on this on how to fix the fuel. Uh, or how to work on the governor on the injection pump uh, to adjust for smoke, to adjust for power, stuff like that. I'm going to, I'm just putting this in the beginning of the video and then following is going to be that information on how all that works. Uh, and I go over stuff like checking your, your uh, air cleaner, checking for boost leaks, stuff like that. So the most important thing to do is to check for all those leaks, um, check your air cleaner, check all that stuff. But um, you also just want to buy a boost gauge. Um, this is the port here. This is a temp center for the air intake. Um, actually, mine's broken. I don't have it hooked up, but it's fine because um, I don't have a training computer, so it doesn't matter. But this is the port here. I can take this out and, and put my boost gauge in there, and then I can um, I just have a long hose on it so I can hold it in the cab and watch what it's doing when I'm driving. And that way you can see what the boost is doing. That's probably really the most important thing to do first off. See what your boost is at, and then check your air filter. Check for leaks. Check all that stuff in the system. All right, so this is the diaphragm that's inside of the air fuel ratio control valve. Basically what the air fuel ratio control valve does, so there's a line that comes from the intake that goes to this cap that's on top of it. So this goes down on top of the pump. All right, let's see if I get the camera there like that. And there's an adjustment screw on the back here. And this adjustment screw limits how far this can travel. What happens is, so you have boosted air, turbo, you know, it's blown air into here, it's boosting into the intake and that goes into the fuel injection pump right here, to the top of this diaphragm. And what it does is it, well, it limits how fast the fuel injection pump can, uh, can get full rack. So the rack is, a, there's an adjustment screw on the side for the rack, and that adjusts how much fuel this thing is allowed to have, how much, how much you know, fuel is allowed to get through this thing for, at its, at its um, highest power setting. And if you didn't have this air fuel ratio control valve, when you floor it, you would just have tons of black smoke until you get enough RPM to get enough boost, to get things cleared up, and then you'd have all that power. What this does is it's regulated by how much boost you have, and it allows the rack to open slower so that you don't get a lot of smoke on acceleration. So if you're getting a ton of smoke on acceleration, this needs to be adjusted. Um, we need to back off this, this uh, jam nut and then back this Allen screw out in, in very small increments and then you know, do snap tests on it and do this with the engine warm, um, rev it up and then you know, see how much smoke you get. Um, once you get a desirable amount of smoke, you know, you, in, in this type of engine, you're going to get some. It's not a, like a brand new you know, Cummings or something diesel engine where there's going to be no smoke. You're going to get some smoke, but you don't want it rolling out. You, know, you want to limit how much smoke you do get, and this is what will limit it. So this screw right here that I'm touching with my finger, that's the rack stop screw, and that adjusts how far the rack is allowed to open. Um, basically the rack is kind of, they're, they're, they're different in different types of injection pumps, but it basically limits how much um, fuel is allowed to be metered out of the, out of the fuel injection pump, out of the lines, um, per, for power setting. And this is like your mean setting of it. This is like the most that can come out. So if you start screwing this thing in, you're going to get tons of power. But you've got to be careful because it's got to match the airflow. If you have more fuel um, and not enough airflow, you're going to start, you're going to drop exhaust valves, you're going to uh, seize uh, the crown on your pistons. There's a lot of things you can that can happen. Um, they put a they once they set these on the dyno, they they crimp this little sleeve on here so you can't adjust this. So if you wanted to, you would have to get that sleeve off there first, and then basically you'd run this in or out. So I I have seen a couple of engines that are really doggy. I've probably driven at least 20 of these growlers, and two of them. One of them was a crate engine he bought, and I I don't know that it was set properly on the dyno. I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I need to get back to his, his growler so I can try adjusting this to see if we can get the power out of it that it should have. Um, I ran one growler that, that ran like a striped ape, uh, 111, uh, ITV 111, and I, I, I didn't look down there to see if that had been adjusted to see if someone took that sleeve off. But I'm not saying to do that because we have EPA laws to worry about, even though this isn't an EPA regulated engine. 
but um, you don't want it set wrong because if it's, you know, you know how an engine is. If you run a two lean or you run a two ridge, you're going to have problems with the engine. Um, some of these older type diesel motors, you know, they get lubrication. Um, the top of the crown of the piston gets lubrication by soot, so you need some soot. But you don't want too much heat. You get too much heat or too much fuel and not enough air, you create too much heat. And then you start seizing pistons, you start uh, dropping exhaust valves, stuff like that. So this is, don't mess with this unless you know what you're doing. Uh, but I'm just showing you guys kind of what it is and where it is. So, you know, once your power is set with that, um, then you come back here to the air fuel ratio control and you adjust this to limit how fast the rack, the fuel injection pump could come up against the rack setting basically. So you don't get too much smoke on acceleration. So my growler smokes a lot on acceleration and rather than, you know, I, I could have just tried to set it first, but instead of doing that because of the age of these things um, and how much they sat, I wanted to make sure that this diaphragm didn't have a hole in it or it wasn't torn. Um, I've seen this a lot on the old the old CAT engines, the D343s, D346s, uh, the early 3408s, 3412s, the DI motors. They all had a diaphragm in the in the air fuel ratio control. You know, this is like all mechanical injection. This is way before electronic stuff. And you know, those things would tear after time. And you try to adjust it, and you can never get an adjustment out of it because it's not working properly. So basically, that spring is pushing up on this, right? And when you get boost, you're forcing this back down. So if there's a hole in this thing or it's leaking out of the side, it's not tight or it's, this housing's cracked, whatever, um, you're not going to get that boost to push down on here to, to uh, allow the rack to travel further. So right now up with the spring pushing up on it, that's, that's uh, going to give it less power basically because um, it's not sensing boost so it can't get the fuel to accelerate. Um, but with that boost pushing down on here, you're gonna get a lot more fuel going in. Um, it's a balancing act, basically. But I took it apart just to make sure my diaphragm was good. Fortunately, my diaphragm's nice and soft. It feels really good. Um, but you know what, in 10 years down the road, we're gonna be seeing a lot of these with this diaphragm going bad. Um, it all depends on how hot it is where you live, uh, how, there are a lot of factors. But even in five years, maybe five to 10 years, we're probably going to start seeing growlers that are, aren't running right um, and, and we can't control that smoke because this diaphragm will go bad. Um, I think it's a common part. You know, I know we can buy these parts out of Brazil, but from what I've researched on the internet, I think Cummings 4BT uses a, a very similar pump. And I was looking at them online and I haven't compared parts or anything like that, but I think that it's possible that this might be the same diaphragm. Um, I can't, I can't, you know, swear to that yet. I haven't really looked that deep into it, but I don't think it's going to be a problem getting them when the time comes. All right, so I've got this back together. Once you put the cover back on, you have to put the spring in there. There's a little plastic collar that goes around the shaft um, that's connected to this uh, Torx screw. And then uh, you slide this cover on and put this single bolt in here. And then you have to put this bracket on that holds your uh, TPS, your throttle position sensor. Put all that back together. And these were really tight, by the way. They were, I had to use a hand, you know, use a, I almost had to get my impact uh, screwdriver, but I was able to use a hammer just on my regular like a big size screwdriver. Um, anyways, tighten those up tight. And then um, it's late right now, so I'm gonna have to try this again, uh, you know, test it tomorrow. I backed this off a half a turn, because um, mine smoked a lot. So I backed it off a half a turn to see, see where, I, where I'm at. And I'll use it as a benchmark uh, tomorrow. I'll warm it up and then I'll do some test driving and see you know, if I can fine tune it. So anyways, if you're working on an issue like that and you have it smoking, there's other factors obviously that can cause this. One of them, you have these two banjo bolts and this hard plastic tubing that brings the boost from the intake manifold to the uh, to the air to the air fuel ratio control valve. Um, so check to make sure that these are tight, that they're not leaking. Make sure that this tube isn't cracked because um, if it's cracked, you're obviously you're leaking boost out. You're not going to be signaling this thing correctly. Um, check your boost lines. You know your hoses. Make sure your hoses aren't blown out. Make sure that they're not your clamps aren't loose. Uh, we had one that we were working on and it had a whistling noise and. You know, it was, it was a boost leak, and I could see it, right? It was not this growler, it was a different growler, but you could see a trail from it blowing air and blowing the dust off, kind of like that. It was leaking right out through there. It happened to have the wrong clamp on. It wasn't able to tighten tight enough. Um, you want to check those. You want to check your aftercooler to make sure that your aftercooler isn't leaking, doesn't, you know, doesn't have a hole in it or something like that. Um, come back over here, check these hoses. You know, give this a shake. Make sure it's tight on there. Check your boost hoses here. Make sure you're... Uh, Make sure your wastegate valve isn't sticking. Just pull this clip off, slide this off, 
put a pair of vice grips on here and you should be able to rotate this uh, about I don't know, like 10 or 20 degrees maybe um, if it's if it's stuck that's gonna give you big problems so just spray some deep creep or something in there to loosen it up uh, make sure the dash pots good on here this could be bad make sure these lines going here to the controller are good make sure the controller is good and then also you know one thing too um, if you if it's a real dog and it ha you think it has no turbo boost at all pull pull this uh, the output line off here your boost line off off of your uh, or I'm sorry your intake uh, the intake air tube off your turbine off the turbine on your turbo and make sure you can spin it um, you can grab the shaft and shake it you, you you're allowed to rock it up and down a little bit it's allowed to have a little bit of play like maybe 30 thousands but it shouldn't have any in and out play that that signals a bad bearing and that's when you start getting problems with bypassing oil and stuff but they will have radial uh, movement and that's all corrected for by uh, centrifugal force when it when this thing spooled up to 30,000 rpm um, it's straight as an arrow it's not rocking it's not moving um, as long as there's nothing wrong with one of the wheels where where it's out of balance anyways those are things to look at um, obviously start with the air filter look at the boost leaks look at that stuff look at your wastegate look at your after cooler make sure it's not cracked you know or leaking take it for a ride and get it on a go up a hill and listen for it. if you hear a whistling you know that's usually an indication of a boost leak if you don't have that whistling the air cleaner's clean all this stuff looks good then you might check that air fuel ratio control valve and see if uh, you can adjust that um, you know these things were set i think and calibrated to run on jp8 that's what they say on there i don't know that there's a difference i talked to a guy that i you know know that worked on these things and he he seemed to think there wasn't a difference I don't think there should be a difference because you know diesel engine can run off pretty much anything especially one like this but um it's possible that going from jp8 to diesel maybe just the temperature of the exhaust from diesel um, isn't hot enough so it's not spinning your turbo as fast um it's possible i don't know um, these are things we're just gonna have to learn as we go along on these things all right anyways thanks for watching um i hope this helps some of you guys um, if you haven't subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button. This all helps me with YouTube. Uh, the more likes I get, the more subscribers I get, the more they'll put my videos out. So it can help other people, help them to find my videos and stuff. So anyways, I hope this helps out and um, have a good day.